Hey everybody, here at City, City Cigar Garage again. Yeah, tongue tied this morning. Haven't had enough coffee yet, obviously. Share a little bit what's going on, talk a little bit about brake pedals and master cylinders. I was going to get real technical with this, but I've decided not. This is just basically common sense stuff that I'm going to share and then show you what's going on a little bit, okay? We'll look at what's going on first. I'll turn this around and show you. Henry J, taking the body off of it. So we can finish welding and mounting parts and pieces. As you can see, I got a lot more tubing in it. Enough to hold the roll cage and everything upright. And I welded everything I could on this car to get it to where we can get the body off and proceed to the next step. They're on their way to get the body now, so get it out of my way for a little bit. I'll show you out here. Oh. It's gone. Somebody come and got it. There's a mountain of steel out here that came out of this other car. I'll walk you inside and show you. Okay, started out. We were just going to do a little bit of tin work. The roll cage is on the floor. That's not a weld. I just wanted to share that with you, okay? If that's how you're going to weld, have somebody else weld. Like I said before, these guys are going down the racetrack and I cannot take that away from them. But this, this kind of stuff here, that one you can tell is real porous, it's dangerous. Walk around here and you can see we've got her sitting on a jig and she's hauled out. There wasn't much to save, so we still got a lot of cleaning and trimming to do, but we're getting there. Okay, pedals. This system I use right here, I get from UB Machine. And when I talked in the other video about location for the clutch, I was talking about the pivot fork. I was talking about this part of this bell crank right here. I wanted this to line up with that um, clutch pivot fork so that I could build linkage to do this. Um, like I say, this is parts and pieces from UB Machine, you know, Rick Jones, Chassis Engineering, a lot of those companies sell this type of kit and they work really well. So, um, that being said, two things you're looking for when you're mounting pedals. They need to be centered on the driver so that it's convenient for him to push on them. You don't want to have to slide your leg over to the left or the right or pick your foot up off the floor to press a pedal. It just doesn't make any sense, okay? These pedals here are about a 5 to 1 ratio. That means when you divide this distance here into this distance here, it's 5 to 1. That's what you're looking for, a minimum of 5 to 1 on a braking system in a drag car, okay? Like this pedal here, the same length pedal, but the ratio changes because the pivot point for the master cylinder is above the pivot point of the pedal. This allows you to mount the master cylinder underneath the floor. This is like through the firewall. And honestly, this pedal here needed to be about another inch and a half long. So then we're on to this fit pedal here. This is the one out of the, the Falcon. And it's like 5.7 to 1. These work, you know, if you're using stock, you know, stock pedal assemblies and stuff, these work really well. I don't, you know, no sense in re-engineering the wheel, but. You know, if you're going to mount a bell crank or something, do it right, okay? Then, I want to talk about master cylinders. When you're using this type of system, you typically want to use a 7 8 bore master cylinder. Like, this Willwood here is a representative of what I use. Now, not on the parts that I have here, but you're going to get an idea anyways. Willwood makes several different master cylinders. They make them to bolt on this assembly, which is more like the... Um, design of the Chrysler style master cylinder and of course this pedal assembly here this is similar to the one I talked about in that pickup truck it's pre-designed pre you can't go wrong the only problem with this is this is a single master cylinder and if you blow a line or something they're gonna crash I like the ones that have the dual cylinders with the bias bar and everything else gives you a little bit of extra protection as does 
the Chrysler style cylinder. If brakes go out on one end, at least you get enough to get slowed down if everything's safe. So, and on this one here, a lot of guys will go to the parts store and buy a Chrysler master cylinder. I'm not a big fan of that because typically the bore on those, like this end where the piston is, is an inch and a sixteenth. With a five to one pedal ratio, like you have in these assemblies here, you have to press on the pedal way too hard to stop the car. And that's that's not safe either, because you can get over anxious and jam on the brakes and slide it. And also, what most people don't think about is it's really hard to stage a car when you got a real stiff brake pedal. Just makes it impossible, near impossible. Therein, like I say, Willwood and other companies make smaller bore master cylinders. I typically use like a 7 8 bore replacement cylinder from Willwood on all my stuff if I'm using the pedal that swings from the firewall like a factory pedal. These are, these are awesome cylinders and they give you a great pedal feel and that's what you're looking for, pedal feel. You know, you got to be able to stop the car and that's important. Like I said, I was going to get into a bunch of math, but there ain't no sense in that. This Falcon here, it had this Corvette style master cylinder on it. This is for disc disc application. has a um, two pound residual valves built in it, whereas this Chrysler doesn't have any. Um, these are great for street rods with power brake boosters. These are not for race cars. These don't work well on race cars because again, six, inch and a sixteenth bore takes up a lot of space. It's just not a good piece. So they're leaky. Like I say, they're good for street rods if you run a disc disc with a booster, but other than that, they're not worth a darn in my opinion. So um, like I can say the Chrysler, the Willwood Master Cylinder, they make one that's got a bolt on cap and it allows the um, fluid from the master cylinder exit either side as caps whereas on the Chrysler style cylinder it only comes out towards the driver's side if it's facing towards the front um, the thing I don't like about these is you have to run an adapter typically to get down to 3 16 lines and they never fit in the, these right you have to modify them to get them to go in sort of a pain in the butt so I just don't like them um, Guys have used them successfully. If you make a longer throw pedal, you're okay. But again, like I say, you don't want to pick your foot up off the floor to press on the pedal. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, the, typically what I do is I'll measure to locate a pedal, even a throttle pedal, is measure to, the dri the, to have the driver set in a chair with his heel on the floor and measure to the center of his foot, like the, you know, in the middle of his foot, to figure out where the pedal pad has to go. I've seen cars with like little pieces built in them or blocks of wood taped to the floor to get your foot up on the pedal and all that other stuff makes no sense so just yeah this is where I was at with the brake stuff smart way to do it and I'm gonna share more on, all, on how all this stuff works once I start mounting it in the Henry J you know just give you a little update there what's going on and what's happening here with the with the Falcon so Short video, just wanted to keep you guys in the loop, let you know what's going on. Like I say, Henry J's leaving. I'll share some more pictures of that and what we got going on there, how I mount parts and pieces. This is going to be, as you well know, it's a ladder bar car. Coil springs in the back, how I make my coil spring mounts, how a panner is supposed to work right, all that good stuff. So I'll share more soon. See you later.